Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at Beta FPV Express LRS stuff. This is the uh, 915 megahertz stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's why my antenna is ginormous. Uh, the 2.4 gigahertz, they have the same, I think it's called the Moxon antenna or Moxie antenna, uh, but it's a lot smaller and uh, it's a smaller form factor than what we've seen in images from uh, companies like Happy Model. And I've got a couple of receivers out here too. And it's really great that we have another company who's also making this product. More choices is always good for us. Uh, they can compete for our dollar based upon price or uh, brand recognition or brand loyalty or customer service or however they want. But I know a lot of people have been wanting to uh, use an X-Lite and Express LRS. Uh, this button on the back, that button is kind of a multi-purpose button. It changes power. You can set binding on it. Um, and this receiver also has a button. Now, oftentimes when we see these little receivers, see that gold button up here in the corner? Oftentimes when we see those, we think of those for binding. In the case of these, that actually puts it into Wi-Fi mode. So like in the Happy Model stuff, you wait 20 or 30 seconds and it automatically goes into Wi-Fi mode. You can activate Wi-Fi mode on uh, these receivers. And the little white bit over here is your Wi-Fi antenna. Uh, so a little bit different. And the size, of course, is uh, fairly... Uh, it's bigger. There's no two ways about it. And there's an antenna that's associated with it. Antenna on the 2.4 gigahertz is going to be about the same size. And to see the... Uh, wires sticking out horizontally are uh, a particular color because I believe they color code the uh, different uh, frequency lines with different colors of antennas. So that's a wise choice. Uh, stock, it will come with a whip antenna when you buy this guy. Uh, this does get warm just like it does with other Express LRS stuff. I, I think this is metal, but I'm really, I'm just not sure. So that's something to keep in mind. But I think their fitment here on the back of the x Lite is pretty dang nice and good. If I can get it to slide down, there we go. So hopefully you can see we've got very little gap between the body. I'm looking down here between the body and the, the adapter. And of course everything else around here is pretty clean. Make sure I've got that down all the way. You can see it sticks up just a touch up here up the top. Um, so this is uh, an X-Lite Pro, which I've actually not used before using it in this video. And uh, X-Lite is a very good radio, but I've moved away from FR Sky because of their firmware radio protocol shenanigans. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, I want to power this one up. That's what I wanted to do next. And I'll do a comparison between this and the uh, EP2 from uh, Beta FPV. I want to power this up and I want to show you uh, the sequence here uh, with just a battery. Um, hopefully I can get this in shot. Now I'm going to do it a different way. We're going to jump into Wi-Fi mode. So, we got the blue light and it flashes over here. If I press the little gold button. Come on. There we go. Now it's in Wi-Fi mode. And if I were to go up to my desktop, it would have uh, ExpressLRS RX Wi-Fi. And then you could use the Wi-Fi updater. Uh, ExpressLRS Configurator did update just this morning. Actually, it's one of the reasons why I was waiting to make this video. Uh, I was a bit concerned that you know, I'm not that tightly informed or well integrated into Express LRS stuff. I'm kind of like you. I just want to use it and have a good time and not worry about my range. Uh, so I was a bit concerned that there was potentially something going on that was going to keep us from being able to just flash the hardware with whatever version of Express LRS via the Express LRS configurator and, and doing what we want. So in theory, um, we should be able to use any TX with any RX as long as they're uh, running compatible versions of ExpressLRS, which we should be able to do with the ExpressLRS configurator. So that that's uh, a little bump to the receiver. I'm going to get my switch out so I can show you the uh, power se sequence. It's just like with the EP2. I'd use USB, but on this board, USB doesn't power the receiver. So this is the next thing I wanted to show you is, you know, these receivers are much different size. You know, this is the EP2 from Happy Model. Sorry, that was a little bit out of shot. This is much more traditional size from Beta FPV. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the antenna. Me being a micro guy, I'm a huge fan of this. You can tuck this away into anything and you'll have more range than we commonly need. Uh, if you're a true long ranger, you'll probably want to have an antenna that sticks outside your carbon. But uh, for, I think, a good portion of us, um, a ceramic or SMD, or not SMD, a small ceramic antenna uh, will do the job to our heart's desire. Uh, Beta FPV, make a smaller one, please. We need more like that. 
And I know that you've got a, an all-in-one board that's got uh, an Express LRS integrated into it. Uh, weight is always important in micros, and hopefully we can continue to make headway improving micro performance with better boards, with lighter hardware, and smaller hardware. But I wanted to give you a comparison between these two. Uh, let's weigh them. That's the next thing we need to do. Okay, first up, we've got the EP2 with some solder and some uh, shrink wrap on it. Hopefully you can see that. 0.58 grams. So... 0.6 if you want to round up. No solder, no antenna. 0.76, so still pretty light. Add the antenna, and now we're 1.67. So, yeah, almost three times the weight when by the time we add the antenna. That's why these small ceramic antennas are such a cool and awesome thing for micros. So, Beta FPV, please. And I think the Beta FPV community who loves their products would also really like to see a smaller receiver with a ceramic antenna. So if it's not working on that, there you go, a new product idea. Okay, so I'm trying to get this in your view so you can see this. If you're new to this stuff, uh, then this you know might be the first time you're seeing this. Uh, if you saw my happy model videos, it's very very similar. We just you could if your board powers your um, receiver with just USB power, you can use the USB and do a plug in three times and then it'll go into binding mode. If you don't have that, then you either have to plug in via the battery lead, or in the case of what I've got here, is, is it's a little bit of a short saver with a switch in it, so the switch makes it nice and handy. Uh, that will be just off the side. But there'll be a blue light on the uh, receiver. We'll uh, hit the power button, wait for that to go off, and then we'll turn it off, then we'll turn it back on, wait for the light to come on and go back off, and we'll repeat that three times. So it goes off, back on, Now we should be able to bind. Let's go ahead and turn my radio on. I, I've bound this one already. Welcome to OpenTX. Yeah. Really amber sounds, but uh, you can see we got that here on the back. Let's see if I can just bind it by pressing the button. Oh, I don't think it's in binding mode anymore. Let me see it reset. I don't think I had it in binding mode. Try again. So turn it off. Back on. Off. Telemetry lost. Oh, it already bound up. Ah, that's what happened. <laughs> so I wanted to show you the binding process, but that one linked up already. Uh, and that's the that's really the awesome thing about this sort of stuff. Not that this has it out of the box, but if you want to do passphrase binding, so you use a little passphrase, like I use N burns um, exclamation point. Uh, it's kind of like a password, but it's not secret. It passes over the air, so if somebody wanted a packet sniff wirelessly, they could do that and pick that up. Uh, but as far as convenience goes for flying and binding, you flash it with the passphrase, same passphrase as on your TX, and they just bind up. There's no binding activity to do. I haven't done that on this yet, but I have done it on others. But because I had already bound this once I turned on the radio, you know, it sunk up and it was working again. So we didn't get to walk through all the way through the binding process for that. But that's the general premise is you want to turn the power on and off three times and then you get a... Uh, not a super fast blinking blue light, which is Wi-Fi mode, but you get kind of a double flash uh, blinking mode, and that's in the binding mode. And again, you can use, I've turned this off, so now it's red-ish amber. Uh, you can use the button to bind. The button also changes the power output that it is. This is um, the 915 megahertz, so it only goes up to, I think, a packet refresh rate of 200. Uh, let's take a look at it here. And you do need to get the uh, Lewis script off of the, uh, um, Express LRS wiki page. You can see here I've got the power set at 500 and the packet rate at 200. That's as high as this one goes. Uh, you know, this could change over time though. We could see 600, 700, 1000. I, I don't know yet. And obviously, you see there we have Wi Fi updates so that we can update the uh, TX over Wi Fi. We've done that before on Happy Model stuff, and you can watch that video. It really is going to apply. We also have a USB port here on the bottom that's USB C, so you can. Uh, update over a UART as well. But that's really it. More Express LRS coming out onto the market. It should all be relatively cheap. It should be cheaper than FR Sky, so we can, you know, uh, as someone who who gets a lot of messages with people who are having troubles binding and figuring out what they've got, it, it's really time consuming, not just for me, but I feel really bad for all the time of people who are 
or who are trying to get started or maybe fairly early in their their FPV journey and they've got FR Sky stuff they're trying to work out like they've got a, a Mobula 6 or a you know some SPI based receiver that really needs D8 mode but they've got a new radio that doesn't have D8 mode so now they're in for another purchase and and they get mad and I understand that but I'm I'm really excited to see more Express LRS stuff I can't be appreciative enough to all the people in the Express LRS Discord that have really uh, done some amazing things for the community, and we're now seeing products being brought to market that are, you know, wholly finished, so to speak. You know, not the firmware side, but products. Because uh, previously you had to either repurpose R9 stuff or build your own DIY. Um, but you you can build these yourself. That's a, a lot of people have done that. Matter of fact, I think uh, Fat Boy FPV he sells them on his website that he he builds his own. So the receivers are going to come in at different prices depending upon what you're looking at. Whether uh, you're probably not looking at the 915 megahertz stuff, you're probably looking at 2.4 gigahertz. That's usually the most popular, and uh, the receivers should should be all around or below, you know, somewhere between 12 to 15 dollars depending upon what you get. Um, I would like to see another ceramic antenna receiver, even if it's this size. You know, I would use something this size in one of my larger. Uh, micros but for like whoops and things of that nature I, I would sure like to see a smaller about half the size of the current board with a ceramic antenna something that I can put in maybe a shark bite whoop or a traditional whoop and beta FPV can also use it in their whoops because they do a lot of micros as well I'll have links down in the video description to the beta FPV product page you can sure check them out uh, see if it's a product that interests you I would suggest if you don't know what to get get the 2.4 gigahertz that's Pretty universal. Most people use that. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. And thank you for watching.